All right, let's go through each of the chunks of the flash descriptor one at a time. We already saw signature, it's pretty simple. It's just a magic number that the hardware reads to know that it's operating in flash descriptor mode. Next is the descriptor map, and that basically provides the pointers to each of these subsequent sections. So it tells you where the component is, the region, the master, and so forth. It also contains some information about how many spy flash chips are used in this particular setup. The component section contains more information about the particulars of the spy flash chips that are used on this particular hardware. For instance, things around their clock frequencies that they run, and if there's any invalid instructions which should never be sent to this particular flash chip. The region section is then one of the most interesting parts because this is the thing that says, where does the flash descriptor start? Well, of course, it's going to start at offset, you know, 0 or 10. Where does the BIOS region start? Where does the CSME region start, etc. So this provides pointers up and out of the flash descriptor so that the hardware knows where the other regions are. And for newer hardware, even though they may support things like the platform data region or the embedded controller region, if they're not actually using it on that particular system, then the expectation is that these registers will be filled in with base address of one FFF and a limit of zero. And that basically tells the PCH, you know, this is not actually used on this system. So once again, it is the FL reg zero through five, which is on the flash descriptor and the F reg zero through five, which is the memory mapped copy found somewhere in the spy bar. F reg for memory in the spy bar, FL reg for the thing on the flash descriptor. The master region has to do with what spy bus masters, meaning things that are allowed to cause transactions on the spy bus, what spy bus masters are allowed to write to other regions of other devices. So this has to do with, for instance, whether the CPU slash BIOS is allowed to write to the management engine, because that's one particular spy bus master. The management engine is a different spy bus master, the gigabit ethernet a different one, embedded controller a different one, and so forth. Well, there's no so forth. Those are the only ones that exist at this time. So anyways, the master region describes permissions about which bus masters are allowed to write to other bus master sections. So this is actually the first bit of flash write access control that we can see. And specifically, it has to do not with, you know, software coming from within the CPU, like making sure that, you know, only kernel could write to it or something like that. No, this has to do with these other processors, these other spy bus masters, and whether or not they can write to different regions. The soft straps, like we said, are things that allow for reconfiguration of hardware functionality without having to actually reconfigure the hardware and how it's laid out on the PCB. And so there was the MCH straps and the ICH straps when it was a Northbridge Southbridge configuration and PCH straps now on PCH systems. Now, even back in the ICH 10 world where everything else was described, the soft straps for the ICH 10 were not actually publicly described and those were only available in the confidential spy programming guide. Then jumping up to the top of the flash descriptor at four kilobytes, there is what's called the OEM section, and this is basically just 256 bytes for an OEM to use however they want. The PCH and the ICH don't read and don't do anything with this. Then there's the descriptor upper map, and this describes where you can find the management engine VSCC table. That is the vendor specific component capabilities, which basically is telling something about how the spy flash chips can be used with the management engine. Then there's the management engine VSCC table. This contains things like the JEDIC ID, which is a standardized ID that describes who the vendor was and what the particular device is. So that'll tell you, for instance, this is a Winbond 64 megabit chip, that kind of thing. But it also describes attributes that can be used for spy partitions. And so there's a notion of an upper and lower spy partition. The idea is that there might be different properties on a given spy flash chip, or there might be different properties between two different spy flash chips and consequently you might need to accommodate the different behaviors. So this is a visualization from the 5 series PCH. It basically says there can be an upper flash partition and a lower flash partition and there's some boundary and it basically says, you know, there might be different, you know, erase granularities or something like that. So maybe an erase up here erases 4K and down here it erases 64K because it all depends on the particulars of the spy flash chips. A single spy flash chip could support reconfiguration because some properties of how it's ultimately going to be used suggest that you know you want to do bulk erases in one region and small erases in another region maybe you want to even be able to erase you know one byte at a time instead of four kilobytes 
and some different chips support that. But for the most part, you should pretty much just think of it like most of the time, the upper and lower is going to be about upper and lower flash chips. All right, now with all of that said, I'm going to have a lab for you where you read the fun ICH10 data sheet. So I want you to take the Optiplex 7010 flash image that is provided to you, and I want you to go back and read the ICH10 data sheet. Now that is not actually the correct exact data sheet. Now we actually saw in a previous section that the Optiplex 7010 is using a 7 series PCH, not a 10 series ICH. So it's not going to be exactly, exactly correct. But other than the soft straps, pretty much everything exactly maps up one to one. So I'm going to have a bunch of questions that you can go read on the website, and I want you to answer all of those questions. You're basically going to hand parse your way through reading the data sheet, parsing the data that you see, and try to answer these questions. And then afterwards, I'll have some videos where I hand parse along with you and show you exactly the correct interpretation so you can see if you got anything wrong, why you got it wrong.